Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us D. Raghunandan from Delhi Science Forum. We will be going to talk about the ISRO launches. Sir, uh, we know that ISRO has launched 104 satellites and everyone is talking about what a big record it is. Right? It is almost two to three times of the previous records. So, what do you have to uh, say about that? Well, uh, I think there has been the usual Indian tendency to uh, blow your own trumpet and talk about big records. We went to town when India sent a rocket to the moon, to Mars. Uh, although in technological terms, neither was a great achievement. And to me, frankly, this launch by ISRO also falls under that category. Yes, it's a world record, but I don't think there is any great technological innovation that ISRO has done to enable this uh, record. It's a record, uh, but as the chairman of ISRO himself uh, said that the launch was less about records than about proving the viability and reliability of ISRO as a launch uh, vehicle which can service a variety of uh, clients. And I think if we are to really understand the significance of this uh, launch, one ought to be looking at where does ISRO fit in the global picture of commercial launch vehicles, uh, what ISRO has done with science and technology, what it hopes it would do. And I think the more interesting part, which almost no media has covered, has been what are these satellites that have been launched? We are talking about 104 satellites, but if you looked at the media coverage, they could be matchboxes. Uh, we don't know what these satellites are about. And I think there's a big story there, uh, which I think uh, people would like to know about. Could you then please tell us about the satellites? I mean, we are yeah. talking about the records, but we don't really know what these That's satellites right. are about. The satellites fall into two broad categories. One is, in India has launched its own uh, satellite, which is a remote sensing satellite, part of what's called the CartoSat uh, series. As the name suggests, it's a cartographic uh, satellite. It's remote sensing, mostly focused on coastal areas, on road networks, uh, and so on. Uh, that's what this satellite would do. That's roughly half the weight of the total payload carried by uh, C-37, the launch uh, vehicle, about 700 odd kilos. The remaining 680 odd kilos are distributed among the 103 other satellites which. So most of these satellites, these other satellites are what are known in the parlance as nano satellites. They are very tiny satellites. The Indian ones two which ISRO has put up, ISRO nano satellites, uh, are both roughly in the 8 to 10 kilo uh, range. But almost all the international satellites we have put up are much smaller in the 4 kilos uh, range uh, of satellites. I think of particular interest is the fact that almost all the international uh, satellites that uh, this launch put up uh, follow the CubeSat standards. That's a new standard that's been around for about 15 uh, years where most other satellites which are put in space are custom built. They tend to be very large and so on. With the advances in technology, particularly miniaturization, like most of the jobs that a huge mainframe computer would have done 30 years ago is today done by a small laptop. Uh, same thing is happening in space technology where small satellites uh, are able to do the job which earlier you would have required very large satellites to do. One particular company uh, has put up in this launch a total of 88 satellites in one go, basically because this company wants to have a set 
it's called a constellation like with stars, of 150 odd satellites all in an orbit around the earth which together will provide you 24-7 coverage of the entire planet at any given point of time. So a client can go to that company and say, I want a photograph of the port in Vishakhapatnam and you'll get it. Another client can ask for a shot of the port in London, you can get that uh, as well. And they are doing this not with these large satellites, but with these tiny uh, satellites. The other advantage of these CubeSats, they are called, is that they are all in the 10 centimeter cubed uh, range or multiples. So it's 10 by 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 by 20 uh, like that. Most of these satellites are in the 3 times 10. Uh, so it's called a 3Q uh, standard. And uh, the good part about these satellites is that they all use standard electronic components which you can buy in the market. So designing satellites is no longer the big mysterious custom made job it used to be earlier. And in fact the CubeSat standard arose out of universities in order to get students and academicians involved in this which otherwise they would not be able uh, to do. And because of the standard size, the launching also becomes easy. So in fact, in yesterday's launch by ISRO, you had these hundred odd satellites which were together and they have a special launch container. And the ISRO uh, launch vehicle basically once it entered orbit, just every 10 seconds would shove out uh, a canister, each of which would release three uh, nano satellites and thereby covering the earth. So I think the methodology of this was interesting. The nature of these satellites is interesting and it indicates a future of what is likely to happen in space. I think more and more you are likely to see the large custom designed satellites being replaced by smaller uh, satellites and I think that's going to be a trend. I've just spoken to you about the constellation of 88 satellites called the Dove satellites. The other highly innovative set of satellites put up by the ISRO launch yesterday were the Lemur satellites, eight of them put up for Spire uh, Global. These are extremely innovative in the sense that while most other satellites do imagery, uh, capturing visual uh, images uh, from the Earth's uh, surface, this satellite is engaged in capturing radio signals. So it's audio uh, based. They look at GPS signaling from ships and other uh, cargo uh, vessels moving around on Earth uh, for various uh, clients. And in theory, a few years down the road with sufficient satellites around, they should be able to capture the movement virtually of any cargo carrying vehicle, whether on land, sea or uh, air. The same set of satellites also uses uh, a technique to use GPS signals, use the effect that they have going through the atmosphere which bends uh, these signals and then from that obtain atmospheric data, weather data and data that relates to climate change. And I think these would be of very high value both scientifically and commercially in the years to come. I think ISRO could do very well in learning how to innovate products in terms of satellites and how they are used rather than only be looking at launch vehicles. Uh, international media is focusing a lot on this achievement by India. They are uh, calling it the new space race. Yeah. So uh, can you please throw some light on that? Yeah, well, in, I think that is the significant part of the ISRO launch is that it cements India's position in the international launch 
uh, market, particularly for launching small satellites in low Earth orbits. Part of this, like with many areas in which Indian science and technology has worked, has been India is constrained. We don't have access to the latest technologies. We haven't developed the latest technologies ourselves. But within the limitations of what we can do, uh, we try to achieve the maximum that we can and do various innovations within that. We have done that in space and we have done that in nuclear uh, as well. And I think this is an example. So we have specialized in a niche market. If people want a large communication satellite for television coverage, big military uh, satellites, they will not come to India at the moment because India still has only the polar satellite launch vehicle, the PSLV. We don't yet have our GSLV, which should be used for the larger vehicle launches. But for smaller launches, people are now increasingly looking at India. This example I gave you of these 88 uh, nano satellites, the same company had come to ISRO before, had launched 12 satellites earlier and have now come with a repeat order to complete their constellation by putting 88 satellites across. Another company which has also been put in there, which is an equally interesting uh, exercise in satellite uh, usage, has come and put up a dozen or so uh, satellites. Again, coming specifically to ISRO, having looked at other options earlier. So ISRO is establishing its position and consolidating its position in launching small satellites in low earth orbits, which even uh, in, in Asia, China does not uh, do as a commercial venture. And Japan and South Korea have not yet reached that stage. So it's certainly true that India has marked out a space, but I think to put it in perspective, uh, India has uh, carved out a niche for itself, but in a $300 billion space launch market in the world, this is a very small niche. Uh, India, for even for its own communication satellite needs, is still going to the European Space Agency or to other launchers and is not able to do those by itself. What do you think is the ISRO's plan next? Well, this year should mark the beginning of India stabilizing its GSLV launches. We've got two or three GSLV launches slated for this year. Uh, and I think that will be interesting to watch because India has had three successive successful launches of the GSLV, which is a landmark and normally is used as a standard to judge whether you have reached a level of competence and you can say, yeah, we've got a good reliable launch vehicle. If we do another two or three successive launches of the GSLV this year, I think we would have entered a new uh, phase. India is also um, trying out a reusable launch vehicle. That is a rocket that you send up, but which comes back. Uh, and the uh, prototype that India has developed looks very much like the American Space Shuttle. It's that kind of a thing, whereas reusable rockets in the US and elsewhere which are being designed are standard vertical rockets which go up and come back down the same way, whereas the one India has designed will land like an aircraft on a runway the way the Space Shuttle did. If you do develop reusable launch vehicles that will further reduce the cost of uh, launches. So India would have then uh, gone into another league uh, in terms of the competition it can enter for commercial launches. And then as far as the science is concerned, India is planning a couple of interesting shots to Mars and to the moon. Uh, and that we will watch out for, not this year, but in the years to come. Thank you so much, sir. That was very informative. Thank you for watching News Click. We'll come back to you with more such stuff.